Luca was born on December 21, 1916, in San Antonio, Texas. Tenayuca witnessed a time period when Mexican Americans were allowed few freedoms and even fewer privileges. As a young child, she forged a close relationship with a grandfather who read her the newspapers and took her to rallies focused on the rights of the poor. Emma was 13 when the Great Depression began with the stock market crash on October 24, 1929. Her interest in social justice had already begun by that time. She liked to visit La Plaza del Zacate, where unemployed workers and families would meet and socialists would give speeches on the plight of the workers. In a time when neither Mexican Americans nor women were expected to speak out, she spoke out fearlessly. At just 16, Emma was already determined to change the injustices against the poor, and so she became involved in community organizing and was even jailed and threatened numerous times. At this young age, she participated in protests of working conditions at the Fink Cigar Company. The great suffering of Mexican workers during the Depression and the deportation of thousands of Mexicans through repatriation compelled Emma Tenayuga to join the Communist Party in 1937. Being a member of the party allowed Emma to undertake bigger struggles for the Mexican workers. During this time, San Antonio, Texas was the pecan capital of the United States. The pecan nut industry was making large profit, but most of the workers at the pecan factories did difficult work at extremely low wages. These Mexican American workers dug ditches and women worked to crack, shell, and process the pecans. The women earned five cents a day for toiling in horrible conditions. When the bosses lowered the daily wage to just three cents a day, Emma Tenayuca led at least 12,000 of the Mexican women pecan shellers on a strike beginning January 31, 1938. Intimidation was often used to keep other workers from joining in the work. Strikers were tear gassed several times and police were deployed to prevent the strike from being effective. The police threw 1,000 strikers, including Tenayuka, into jail, but they could not hold back their struggle. Tenayuka later said, What started out as an organization for equal wages turned into a mass movement against starvation, for civil rights, for a minimum wage law, and it changed the character of West Side San Antonio. This pecan sheller strike is considered by many historians to be the first significant victory in the Mexican-American struggle for political and economic equality in this nation. Tenayuca's work for labor issues and civil rights predated Cesar Chavez and the civil rights movement. In less than two months, the pecan sheller successfully forced the owners to raise their pay. Despite the raise in wages for the workers, Emma continued to face challenges. The following year, on August 25, 1939, Tenayuca was at the center of what is still on record as the city of San Antonio's largest riot. As Tenayuca began speaking at the Municipal Auditorium of San Antonio, approximately 5,000 rioters stormed into the auditorium, throwing rocks and bricks, breaking windows, setting fires, and ripping out the auditorium seats. Emma was able to escape safely. Later that night, together with the Ku Klux Klan, the same mob that rioted in the auditorium also burnt the city's mayor for giving Tenayuka the right to use the city's auditorium to gather and for having defended Emma's right to free speech. Following this event, Tenayuka was no longer welcome in her hometown. Emma left Texas for many years, eventually putting herself through college in San Francisco, California, where she earned a degree and a certificate in education. As a result of her actions, Tenayuka suffered poverty, 
unemployment, and personal threats against her own safety. These challenges never stopped her from seeking an answer to the injustice that she observed around her. It wasn't until the late 1960s that Tenayuka returned to her hometown of San Antonio. Then and there, she continued in service to the public as a reading teacher to migrant students. Emma always focused on empowering people in the most basic and humane ways. The things that she fought to achieve in our society, like social security, unemployment benefits, minimum wage, equal access to education, were in her days called communist. Today, these are called social justice. At her funeral in 1999, Emma Tenayuka was honored by hundreds of her friends and loved ones. They offered pieces of metal or steel in tribute because they said that she was made of steel. Writer Carmen Tafola read a poem at her funeral mass. One stanza read, La Passionaria, we called her, because she was our passion, because she was our heart. Defendiendo a los pobres, speaking out at a time when neither Mexicans nor women were expected to speak at all. Among the people for whom she fought and spoke and went to jail, Emma Tenayuka's name was said with a respect reserved for no other leader. They kept alive her story, even when so many others tried to erase it from history.